Welcome back friends. In this session, we can discuss the golden age of microbiology and the contributions of Louis Pasteur into the field of science. The work that began with Pasteur started an explosion of discoveries in microbiology. The period from 1857 to 1914 has been named the golden age of microbiology because Numerous discoveries during this period led to the establishment of microbiology as a science. During this productive period, microbiologists studied the chemical activities of microorganisms, improved the techniques for performing microscopy and culturing microorganisms, and developed vaccines and surgical techniques. Some of the major events that occurred during the golden age of microbiology are depicted here in this slide and we can discuss these in our coming sessions. First, we can discuss the contributions of Louis Pasteur into the field of science. Many of you are knowing Louis Pasteur for the process that bears his name pasteurization, right? Yes, however, Pasteur made several other very important contributions to science that you should know about. He was a French chemist and microbiologist who was one of the most important founders of microbiology and called as the father of modern microbiology. So, Louis Pasteur is called as the father of modern microbiology. We already discussed in our first session that Anthony van Leeuwenhoek was called as the father of microbiology, whereas Louis Pasteur is called as the father of modern microbiology. He pioneered the study of molecular asymmetry, discovered that microorganisms cause fermentation and disease. He discovered the process of pasteurization and saved the beer, wine and silk industries in France. He disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. Also, he developed vaccines against chicken cholera, anthrax and rabies. Further, his medical discoveries provided direct support for the germ theory of disease. Now we can discuss the contributions of Louis Pasteur in detail. First, he discovered the existence of molecular asymmetry. In 1848, he resolved a problem concerning the nature of tartaric acid. So what was the problem concerning to the nature of tartaric acid? The problem is that a solution of this compound derived from living things rotated the plane of polarization of light passing through it. but Tartaric acid derived by chemical synthesis, that is racemic acid, had no such effect, even though its chemical reactions were identical and its elemental composition was the same. So, Pasteur made the surprising observation that crystalline tartarate consisted of a mixture of crystals in right-handed configurations. However, when these crystals were separated manually, he found that they exhibited right and left asymmetry. In other words, a balanced mixture of both right, that is dextrorotatory and left levorotatory crystals was optically inactive. Thus, Louis Pasteur discovered the existence of molecular asymmetry, the foundations of stereochemistry. So, the first discovery or the first contributions of Louis Pasteur was in the field of chemistry. Next, he showed that the fermentation was caused due to living organisms. In 1854, Pasteur was asked to solve problems related to alcohol production at a local distillery. And thus, he began a series of studies on alcoholic fermentation. The problem was to find out why wine and beer get sold. And the distillery people hoped to develop a method that would prevent the spoilage when those beverages were shipped long distances. At that time, many scientists believed that air converted the sugars in these fluids into alcohol. So, it is faster it was found that microorganisms called yeast convert the sugars to alcohol in the absence of air. So, this process, that is, the conversion of sugars into alcohol in the absence of air is called as fermentation and is used to make wine and beer. 
He also found that soaring and spoilage of alcoholic beverages like wine and beer are caused by different microorganisms called bacteria. Also, he found that in the presence of air, bacteria change the alcohol into vinegar. His next contribution is the invention of pasteurization method. In the last slide, we had discussed that while studying fermentation, Louis Pasteur found that microorganisms are responsible for the spoilage of alcoholic beverages like wine and beer. So, Louis Pasteur's solution to the spoilage problem was to heat the beer and wine just enough to kill most of the bacteria that cause the spoilage. So, this process is called pasteurization. In other words, pasteurization is the process of heating the liquids to 60 to 100 degrees Celsius to kill the microorganisms present within them that cause them to be spoiled. The method of pasteurization continues to be used widely in the dairy industry and other food processing industries to achieve food preservation and food safety. Nowadays, different methods of pasteurization technique are employed in food processing industries like low temperature longer time method, high temperature shorter time method, ultra high temperature method, etc. In low temperature longer time method or the LTLT method, the liquid is heated to 62.8 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and this method is also called as holding method batch method or vat method. In high temperature shorter time method or the HTST method, a heat treatment of 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds is applied followed by rapid cooling to below 10 degrees Celsius. This method is also called as the continuous system or flash pasteurization method. And in ultra high temperature method, the liquid is heated above 138 degrees Celsius for 2 seconds. So, it was Louis Pasteur who invented the method of pasteurization and the pasteurization is the process of heating the liquids below 100 degrees Celsius to kill the microorganisms present within them that cause them to be spoiled. The next contribution you already know that he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. We have already discussed this in our first session that Louis Pasteur gave an ultimate solution to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation by his swan neck flask experiment. So, please refer the part 1 of this lecture series for more details. Next is the discovery of Pasteur effect. So, what is Pasteur effect? Louis Pasteur found that aerating yeast and growth caused the increase in yeast cell growth while fermentation rate decreased. That is, a switch from anaerobic to aerobic conditions result in the decrease in the rate of carbohydrate breakdown by yeast. So, the inhibiting effect of oxygen on fermentation or the inhibition of glycolysis by oxygen is known as Pasteur effect. Actually, the Pasteur effect is due to the inhibition of the enzyme phosphofructokinase that involved in the glycolysis. Uh, thus, Louis Pasteur described the contrasting effects of aerobic and anaerobic condition on the fermentation of sugar. So, Louis Pasteur discovered the Pasteur effect and the Pasteur effect is the inhibiting effect of oxygen on fermentation or the inhibition of glycolysis by oxygen. Louis Pasteur's next contribution is the work with silk worms and he rescued the silk industry. Now we can check how he rescued the silk industry. In the middle of 19th century, the French silkworm industry was being destroyed by two infectious diseases, which were killing a great number of silkworms. In 1865, Louis Pasteur accepted a request to investigate the problem. So the silkworms were affected by two diseases, which are the diseases. The first disease is the pembrane disease or otherwise called as nosema or pepper disease and the second disease is the flaccary disease. The pembrane disease is a disease of silkworms which is caused by protozoans mainly nosema bombicus and other species. How Louis Pasteur's work 
help the silk industry or how he rescued the silk industry from the pembrane disease we can check that louis pasteur noticed that the worms with nosema disease developed a shiny corpuscles and showed that the disease was both hereditary and contagious he identified that parasitic microbes were the causative agent of the disease and developed a method for prevention of contamination of healthy silkworm eggs and this method is called as mother moth microscopic examination method and by this method he suggested to use only healthy and disease free caterpillars for breeding stocks now we can check how he performed the mother moth microscopic examination method to protect the silkworm from pembrane disease in mother moth microscopic examination method the female moths were allowed to lay eggs separately and after laying eggs he ground the female moths and examined them under the microscope if the shiny corpuscles were observed he destroyed the eggs otherwise he kept them for breeding this method that is the mother moth microscopic examination method is still used in silk producing countries to protect the silk worms from pembrane and other disease the next disease is the flakeri disease flakeri is a disease of silk worms and infected silk worms look weak and can die from this disease louis pasteur concluded that bacteria is responsible for the flakeri disease and he had to ice few hygiene rules like good ventilation and quarantine of the suspected batches to prevent the contamination this is how he rescued the silkworm industry by finding out solution for the pembrane and flakeri disease now we can discuss his contribution in vaccine development pasteur's first important discovery in the study of vaccination came in 1879 and related to a disease called chicken cholera today the bacteria that cause the disease is called as pastorella multocida so the chicken cholera is a highly contagious and lethal disease that occurred in epidemics in poultry yards and it is caused by the pastorella multocida a zoonotic bacterium pasteur had succeeded in culturing the causative virulent bacteria of chicken cholera and he injected these bacteria in chickens for the study purpose but many of chickens died after this procedure of injection but in the summer of 1880 he found a vaccine against chicken cholera by accidental discovery we can check how the accidental discovery of chicken cholera vaccine had happened so it is in summer and just before the summer holiday break louis pasteur directed his assistant charles chamberlain to inject the chickens with a fresh culture of bacteria but chamberlain may have been preoccupied with the thoughts of upcoming holiday and he forgot to inject the chickens before leaving so he decided to do it after holiday and the culture remained in bins when he returned a month later he carried out pasteur's instruction and injected the chicken with the now aged bacteria instead of the fresh culture but what happened next was most important the chickens inoculated with the aged culture developed only a very mild form of the disease and recovered from the death after that they inject the same chickens with freshly grown virulent bacteria but surprisingly the chicken still did not develop disease here is the experimental procedure for the discovery of chicken cholera vaccine louis pasteur and his assistant charles chamberland injected a aged pure culture to a healthy chicken and found that the chicken remained healthy in the next set of experiment they injected a freshly pure culture to two set of chickens the first chicken was previously injected with aged pure culture and the second set of chicken was not previously injected with the aged culture and they found that the first set of chicken that is the chicken previously injected with aged pure culture remained healthy while the fresh chicken 
that did not receive any previous injection with aged culture died because of the injection with the pure culture. So by this discovery they found that the chicken cholera bacillus cultures left for several weeks lost their pathogenicity that is they lost their ability to cause disease but remain their ability to protect the chicken from infections. These cultures were said to be attenuated when the chickens were injected with attenuated cultures they not only remain healthy but also were able to resist the disease when exposed to virulent cultures. Louis Pasteur called the attenuated culture a vaccine. In Latin, vacca means cow. This was given in honor of Edward Jenner who previously prepared similar preparation against smallpox. Louis Pasteur's next vaccine discovery is the anthrax vaccine. Anthrax is a serious infectious disease caused by gram-positive rod-shaped bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis. Like in the previous case, here also Louis Pasteur used the principle of attenuation to develop vaccine against anthrax. He attenuated anthrax bacillus by incubation at high temperatures and proved that incubation of such bacilli in animals introduced protection against anthrax. In 1881, he helped to develop vaccine for anthrax which was used successfully in sheep, goats and cows. The next vaccine discovery by Louis Pasteur is the vaccine against swine erysipelas disease. So shortly afterwards, Louis Pasteur was called to study a disastrous epidemic of swine erysipelas in the south of France. In March 1883, he identified the culprit as a highly virulent bacterium now called as Erysipelothrix rusipathiae. So the swine erysipelas is an infectious disease caused by the bacterium Erysipelothrix rusipathiae seen mainly in growing pigs. Here also he used the principle of attenuation by passing the causative organism through different hosts and he developed vaccine against swine erysipelas. The next discovery is the discovery of rabies vaccine. So, soon after the discovery of chicken cholera and anthrax vaccine, Louis Pasteur turned his attention to rabies in 1880, when the problem of rabid dog in Paris was getting out of hand. The rabies is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammals. So, like, the, like in the previous case, Louis Pasteur wanted to apply the principle of attenuation here in the case of rabies also to prepare the vaccine. But he found that he could not grow the rabies agent in pure culture and it was too small to see under the Pasteur's microscope. Why this happened? We know that the causative agent of rabies is a virus and like most of the bacteria, viruses cannot be grown on artificial media but need a living cell for the culturing. So, Louis Pasteur developed a method for culturing the rabies agent in the spinal cord of a live rabbit. In order to prepare the attenuated culture of the invisible agent, he desiccated the spinal cords of the infected animals until the preparation became almost non-virulent. And the vaccine had tested in dogs and found successful. Then, after the successful administration of this vaccine in dogs, this vaccine was used on a 9-year-old boy named Joseph Meester on July 6, 1885 after the boy was badly bitten by a rabid dog. Since the boy's death was certain in the absence of treatment, Louis Pasteur agreed to try this vaccine. So, Joseph Meester was injected 13 times over the next 10 days with these preparations of attenuated virus and he survived from the administration of this vaccine. Thus, the success of the treatment led the foundations for the manufacture of many other vaccines and the first institute of Pasteur was also built on the basis of this achievement.
the next contribution of Louis Pasteur is that he is considered as one of the fathers of germ theory of disease. So what is germ theory? The germ theory of disease states that certain diseases are caused by the invasion of the body by microorganisms. This theory seems simple but it is one of the most critically beneficial theory in medical field. Why? Why because before the germ theory of disease the causes suggested for the occurrence of disease were the effect of supernatural phenomena like planetary alignments, effect of bad body humors and the faulty environment etc. The predominant theory until germ theory of disease that was eventually accepted in 19th century was termed as miasma theory meaning pollution or bad air. The miasma theory says that diseases such as cholera, chlamydia infection or black death were caused by a miasma that means a noxious form of bad air emanating from rotting organic matter. Many scientists carried out research that contributed towards the formation of the germ theory like Agostino Bassi, Ignace Semmelweis, Chidian Mendel, John Snow, Joseph Lister, etc. However, the scientific proof of the theory was the achievement of Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. So, these are the major contributions of Louis Pasteur into the field of science. In the course of these studies, he also introduced techniques of sterilization, developed steam sterilizers, hot air oven and autoclave. So, in conclusion, Louis Pasteur is an exceptional scientist who opened a new era in medicine and biology. The theoretical implications and practical importance of Louis Pasteur's work were immense. Pasteur once said, there are no such things as pure and applied science. There are only science and the applications of science. Here are the major quotes of Louis Pasteur. So, in next class, we can discuss the contributions of Robert Koch, Edward Jenner and Joseph Lister. Thank you.